Hey everybody, welcome back to Submarine History. Today, uh, we're going to continue our walk along the U.S. submarine timeline uh, with a briefing on John P. Holland and the Electric Boat Company. This briefing uh, will bridge the gap in submarine development in the U.S. from the end of the Civil War in Intelligent Whale in 1872 to the commissioning of the USS Holland in 1900, so about 28 years. We'll talk about Holland's uh, various submarine designs, uh, how he got involved with the electric boat company, and we'll have a table at the end that compares specs for selected Holland boats, and we'll even compare them against a World War II era submarine. After the briefing, uh, you should understand how the U.S. Navy got to the point of building the A-class submarines. Um, I'll have to think a little bit about how I want to continue the walk through the, uh, through the U.S. classes after the A's, um, just since there's so many classes. Um, I don't want to just to drone on with numbers and charts, you know, I'd, I'd rather tell a story, but, um, but I'll figure something out. Now the 1800s in the U.S. was a real struggle for submarine development. The U.S. Navy, while interested in the idea of submerged, hidden vessels unsuspectingly blowing up ships, they had a lot of reservations about the technology and the utility of submarines. Submarine builders they were in a death sp spiral uh, of having to self-fund demonstration boats in the hopes of getting a future big fat Navy contract, only to have those hopes dashed uh, as the Navy changed their requirements or the political winds turned against them. Our primary reference uh, for this briefing is Norman Friedman's book, U.S. Submarines uh, through 1945 in Illustrated Design History, published by the Naval Institute Press. Read the description to this briefing. Uh, it has relevant uh, related references and links. Uh, and last uh, but not least, thank you to the United States Naval Institute for all they do preserving and promoting world naval history. The work USNI does uh, is invaluable. Consider supporting USNI with a donation or membership. And if you have any questions or comments <clears throat> uh, regarding the briefing, uh, post them below in the comments section. I also have a Discord uh, for more in-depth discussions. Uh, you can find an invitation link on the channel page. Okay, so uh, let's hit it. And here he is, uh, John P. Holland, born uh, February 28th, 1841 in Ireland. He is the second of four boys, uh, his parents being John uh, and Mary Holland. He trained uh, as a teacher and spent time teaching uh, mathematics in Ireland as a member of a Catholic religious community until 1872 when he emigrates to the United States at the age of 31. Now, the story goes that shortly after his arrival in the USA, uh, he slipped and fell on an icy street in Boston and ended up spending time in a hospital uh, recuperating. Not having much to do, uh, he uses that time to refine some submarine designs, subs uh, being something he had developed an interest in uh, around 1863 and after he had already been interested in flight uh, in airplanes. Uh, Holland was fortunate uh, to be living and studying submarines at a time when there was great technological progress. Um, these were some of the technologies coming together to make his ideas reality. Uh, number one, uh, lead-acid battery technology, uh, which was discovered in 1859 and with mass production starting by around 1881. Uh, number two, the internal combustion engine, initially the Brayton cycle engine in 1871 and then the auto cycle in 1876. Uh, number three, self-propelled torpedoes, and this is specifically the Whitehead torpedo of 1866. And then finally, uh, the application of aviation principles to submarine design. Uh, and this would, be a bit, this would have been work uh, by George uh, Cayley on aviation principles and glide, in, excuse me, gliders uh, going back to 1848. Holland focused on a design uh, using a single pressure hull with dive planes for maneuvering and depth control. Uh, his idea was that a submarine would normally have a full ballast tank uh, and still be positively buoyant with the dive planes, you know, holding the boat down at a given depth and it moved through the water. The ballast tanks normally would be full. Stability was fine-tuned with small transfers of water between trim tanks fore and aft. Um, in the case of loss of maneuvering, uh, a boat would naturally float to the surface. And this was very different from Holland's contemporary rivals who offered multiple haul-down screws uh, to get a submarine to a set depth 
followed by the transfer of large amounts of water from the ballast tank to achieve uh, stability. Holland uh, offered an underwater airplane, while his rivals offered helicopters. Following his convalescence in 1872, Holland sought out uh, Secretary of Navy George N. Robeson, uh, who, turn, who in turn passed him off to Captain Edward Simpson of Bew Ord's Naval Torpedo Station in Newport, Rhode Island, uh, established in 1869 for the purpose of studying ordnance and torpedoes. So think of it as the Navy's original skunk works. Holland uh, offered Simpson a design sketch from 1870, uh, a 15 and a half foot submersible with a one and one half foot beam and two feet in height, operated by one man and powered by uh, treadles, which is, uh, you know, foot powered. Simpson didn't, didn't care for the design. Uh, he didn't like that the operator couldn't see while submerged and he didn't like that it was human powered. Um, in response, Holland incorporated a Brayton engine to replace the treadle and argued the boat's compass would be sufficient for navigation. But no contract was offered to develop the boat, um, although by 1875 this design was the subject of technical discussions at the Naval Torpedo Station. Holland's next opportunity to sell a submarine design would be four years later in 1876, when he was introduced to the Fenian Brotherhood. Uh, the Fenian Brotherhood was an Irish Republican organization uh, in the United States, and they were keen on finding a way to check British sea power, and Holland's submarine was something uh, they thought they could use. But before Holland can offer them a submarine capable of combat, he needs to test his design ideas first. So he offers them a demonstration boat based off the design for Simpson. Uh, it's made of iron uh, and roughly the same size and human powered with, a crew, uh, with one crew member, displacing 2.25 tons. This is the first submersible that uh, Holland built, uh, Holland 1. Uh, it was launched on May 22nd, uh, 1878. It was a test platform for further development of ideas and practices. Uh, the, Fini uh, the Fenians fund it, Holland builds, uh, and then tests it. The Fenians like the results and agree to finance a second full-size submarine with combat capability. Holland 1 gets scuttled uh, after the tests are complete, uh, but it was recovered in 1927 and now is on display at the Patterson Museum in uh, New Jersey. Here we have Holland 2, or the Fenian Ram, uh, launched on May 1st, 1881, uh, a little less than three years after Holland 1. This is a much bigger boat. Uh, iron, uh, 19 tons surface displacement, 31 feet long with a crew of three, uh, commander, engineer, gunner. Uh, it had a Brayton engine that produced 15 to 70 horsepower, making nine knots on the surface, and uh, it was thought it could do the same submerged. Notable uh, is that this engine was used for surfaced and submerged power. Uh, while submerged, air inside the boat was used for the engine, exhaust being discharged overboard down to a depth of 40 feet uh, when back pressure got too great. For armament, uh, it had a ram and a forward-firing pneumatic gun. We'll talk about that gun uh, in a second, or in a minute. Um, this boat is going through trials in 1883 when Holland decides to build a 16-foot replica uh, that, displaced, excuse me, that displaced one ton. And he does this for the purpose of testing plan improvements to Holland II. So this scale model is known uh, as Holland III. But... Um, Bad luck. It's like bad weather for Holland because uh, there is a disagreement among the Fenians regarding the utility uh, of submarines in general. Some want to focus on more direct, uh, proven methods to battle the British. Uh, it's possibly a dispute over money. In any case, the Fenians just decide to steal both boats in November 1883. Uh, Holland 3, that model, uh, it's lost in a storm while being towed, and uh, Holland 2, the Fenian ram, it's laid up in uh, New Haven, Connecticut, where it seems to be put into storage and abandoned. Uh, but today, it's on display as well at, at the uh, Patterson Museum, along with Holland One. But if bad luck is like bad weather, it's also true that doors in life close and doors in life open, which is exactly what happened when Holland meets U.S. Navy Lieutenant William W. Kimball, not long after the Fenians steal the ram. Holland meets Kimball at the Naval Artillery Station at the New York Naval Yard. 
Kimball, uh, he's aware of Holland from the 1875 lectures at Newport, and he understands what a tremendous talent Holland is. Initially, he tries, unsuccessfully, to get Holland hired into Bew Ord. Having failed to get Holland hired, Kimball then introduces him to U.S. Army Lieutenant Edmund L. Zielinski, artillery branch of Fort Hamilton in Brooklyn. Uh, Zielinski, he's got this high, he's got this side hustle going, uh, the pneumatic gun company, and he's looking to sell his guns to the U.S. Navy. So what is a pneumatic gun? Okay, in the late 1800s, the U.S. Navy desired to be able to shoot an explosive-filled shell at a target, but the conventional naval guns that day weren't suitable. Uh, this was because of the design of the guns, the combination of powder combustion and sudden acceleration of the shell would lead to the explosive inside the shell prematurely detonating in the barrel. A pneumatic gun works by firing a projectile with a compressed air charge. The, ex uh, the acceleration uh, is more gradual and eliminates the premature detonation experienced in conventional guns. And here are some pictures of USS Vesuvius from 1888, uh, the dynamite cruiser that used Zelensky's pneumatic guns. Um, the 15-inch guns could shoot a high-angled 550-pound explosive projectile about a mile. Zelensky thought that Holland submarines, with their ability to surface at a high bow angle, would be a perfect application for his pneumatic gun. He hires Holland, uh, and they form the Nautilus Submarine Boat Company in 1884. They would go on to build Holland 4, or the Zelensky boat. Uh, the sketch here, uh, that's it. Again, this is a demonstration platform to prove concepts and ideas uh, the, and, and they're funding it themselves. The boat was launched on September 4th, 1885. Uh, it had a wood hull to save money with a Brayton engine, and it could do nine knots on the surface. 50 feet long with an eight-foot beam. Uh, the submarine had a single operator who could conduct attacks with the pneumatic gun, or it could attach mines to the ship's hull and electrically detonate them from a distance. The boat was trialed during 1886, uh, but they went bankrupt, and the boat was scrapped soon after the trials were complete. At this point, <clears throat> you know, one could argue that Holland wasn't a very successful as a submarine designer or builder. And uh, this point is driven home two years later when on November 26, 1887, uh, the Navy issued a request for bids to design a submarine with specifications influenced by the developments uh, not from Holland, but from Europe. This submarine specifications had the following requirements, uh, a 15 knot surface speed, eight knots submerged, two hour submergence uh, at eight knots, and a 12 hour submergence uh, from an endurance standpoint. The ability to dive down to 150 feet and quickly change direction 10 degrees, inherently positively buoyant, engines with an output of up to 1000 horsepower, and a displacement of 40 to 200 tons. And this contract was valued at $2 million, which is a lot of money for that time. Holland and his competitors, and he had competitors foreign and domestic, they offered their designs to the Navy, which were evaluated <clears throat> and thrown out because of a lack of uh, performance guarantees. The project is bid out again in uh, 1889, and Holland wins with a boat featuring a single screw and steam powered. But once again, he can't catch a break because the money for the contract is redirected to surface ships after the first Cleveland administration ends. Uh, when Cleveland is reelected in 1892, the submarine project is rebid on April 1st, 1893. Holland, now representing himself as the Holland Torpedo Boat Company uh, since February 5th, 1891, he wins a scaled down $200,000 contract. Here is Holland's design, Holland 5 or Plunger, launched uh, August 7th, 1897. This boat was a complete train wreck as a test platform and almost ruined Holland's reputation. After winning the contract, additional design requirements from Bue Ord and Bue Engineering uh, result in the boat having five vertical and horizontal screws in addition to three steam engines, making it complicated to evaluate as a test platform. 
Uh, plunger had a displacement of 149 surface and 168 tons submerged. The three triple expansion steam engines produced a total of 1,500 horsepower and did power the boat to 15 knots on the surface. This is Holland's first boat with batteries, uh, producing 70 horsepower and making eight knots submerged. There was very little available space for crew as the steam engines consumed most of the boat's interior. Um, the steam plants also made the boat intolerably, intolerably hot. Um, and this was a common problem at the time uh, around the world with builders who were using steam power in submarines. The boat was so bad uh, that Holland actually offered to replace the steam power plant uh, with an internal combustion engine, but it was too expensive. Then Holland even offered to return most of the progress payments for Plunger to finance an improved Holland. Um, Plunger, it, it ends up failing dockside trials soon after launching. And, uh, you know, probably to Holland's dismay, uh, Congress on June 10th, 1896, and this is while Plunger is being designed and built, they authorized two more similar submarines to be built, each with a $175,000 budget. Uh, but they would only be funded if Plunger proved successful in trials and accepted by the Navy. So Colland, um, you know, he's at a crossroads. And he decides to abandon Plunger and convinces his financial backers uh, to build a new design that they can show the Navy. And it will be the boat that Holland knows the Navy needs, even if they don't understand it yet. And that's Holland 6, launched May 17, 1897. It's iron, uh, 50 feet, 53 feet long, displaces 64 tons surfaced with a 50 horsepower auto cycle engine uh, and a battery pack. Capable of 200 nautical miles at six knots surfaced and 30 nautical miles submerged at five and a half knots with a crew of six. For weapons, it had a bow firing pneumatic gun and one torpedo tube with three torpedoes total. Holland 6 uh, accidentally floods the night of October 13th, uh, 1897, but it's salvaged and begins trials on February 25th, 1890, 1898. Um, at this point, Holland is nearly out of money to continue development of his privately funded Holland 6, and he still has the burden of getting plunger accepted by the Navy before he can begin work on the other two boats being funded by that 1896 Act of Congress. 11 days uh, before the start of the Spanish-American War, okay, this is April 10th, 1898, Secretary of the Navy Theodore Roosevelt suggests buying Holland 6. Uh, and with the start of the war, Kimball, now commanding the tor uh, torpedo boat flotilla, he wanted to use Holland 6 uh, at Havana. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, the Navy uh, wasn't able to conduct official trials until November 12th, 1898. 1898, which was, you know, well after the war was over. Um, the November trials revealed some issues with the boat, and Holland spent the winter of 1898 and 1899 improving and rebuilding the boat. Now, it's during this time that uh, Isaac Rice, a German immigrant and prominent lawyer businessman, he meets up with Holland. Rice, uh, he has a stake in the electrodynamic company that he obtained in 1892. They made electric motors and generators. That was followed by the Electric Storage Battery Company, uh, 1897. That would eventually be referred to as Exide. Rice forms the Electric Boat Company on February 7th, 1899 with Holland Torpedo Boat Company and the Electric Launch Company, Elko, as the major subsidiaries. And then fortunately for the pair, uh, congressional backers of Holland were able to pass an amendment to the 1896 Act which made the two follow-on boats to Plunger similar to Holland 6 instead of Plunger itself. Now, in spite of this, the Board of Construction dug their heels in and demanded that Plunger be finished before the amended 1896 Act applied. And in an end-round move, uh, the Electric Boat Company demonstrated Holland 6 in Washington, D.C. on March 14, 1900, in front of a group of con congressmen, Admiral Dewey of the General Board, the Bureau Chiefs, and the Assistant Secretary of the Navy. Dewey was so impressed by the performance of Holland 6 that the Navy purchased it on April 11, 1900 for $150,000. Under the amended 1896 contract, 
Seven improved Holland 6s would be built at a price of $170,000 each. These seven boats would become the Adder or A-class submarines, also referred to as the Plunger class, which is very confusing. The Holland 6 design is so successful that it's licensed to England and Japan, making Holland's submarine design theory the basis for submarine development around the world. Now, Holland would part company with Electric Boat in 1984, and he passes on uh, October 12, 1914. The Electric Boat Company it would have a long existence servicing the Na U.S. Navy and its submarine needs, becoming General Dynamics in uh, 1952. So let's take a look at a table uh, comparing some of the Holland's different boats. And for fun, I'm going to include specs for uh, Sakao, which was a uh, Finnish submarine designed by IVS and launched in 1930. And of course, I forgot to bring that table up. So here, let me gonna open up the slideshow here because I'm doing this in an inefficient way. Okay, so on this table, we have um, Plunger, uh, which was Holland 5, <clears throat> and we're comparing that to Holland 6, uh, which on this table I'm describing as Holland SS1 because that original Holland 6, um, it does, the Navy accepts it, and that becomes SS1. So below that, the, uh, the A class submarines, their hull numbers will actually start with like SS2, you know, onward up. And then the last row, uh, that's a cow. But I kind of thought it was interesting that, uh, you know, here, and you can stop this if you want to go over the numbers. I'm not really going to do that. Um, but it's just kind of interesting to see these three boats that are developed, that are, you know, designed and built right around the turn of the century. You know, 30 years later, we still find a need for boats that size with something like Sakao. Um, and, uh, you know, its dimensions and its performance actually is is actually pretty pretty similar to those to those early Holland boats. So, um, but I just wanted to share that with you. So uh, that is it for today's briefing. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, and if you have any questions, post them below or head over to the Submarine History Discord and ask your questions there. Till next time, peace out.